checked in. It's the Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls. Dolls like you and me. Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls. Raggy Dolls. Made him perfectly. So if you got a bump on your nose or lumps on your toes, do not despair. Be like the Raggy Dolls and say I just don't care. Cause Raggy Dolls. It all began with Mr. Grimes' waste paper basket. It was full to the brim. This factory needs a good clean out from top to bottom, he muttered. There's too much clutter. We need efficiency. Time is money. He picked up the telephone. Get me the foreman, he ordered. Hello, Fred? Listen, stop all productions. We're going to have a complete tidy up. Everything not needed must go. Before they knew what was happening, the raggy dolls were taken out of the reject bin, thrown into a cardboard box, carried out of the factory, and tossed into a skip. Whatever is going on? whispered Princess. Keep calm, everyone, said Dotty. The main thing is, we're all still together. We'll manage somehow. There was a clanking noise and the hiss of a lorry's brakes. Chains were attached to the skip. Take it away, called Fred, the foreman. That's the lot. Put you up, called the driver. The lorry rumbled out of the factory yard and was soon speeding towards the town dump. When they got there, they found it was a noisy and smelly place. It was smelly because of the waste and slops from people's dustbins, and noisy because of the flocks of seagulls squawking and squabbling over scraps of leftover food. I don't like those birds, said Lucy, and her knees started knocking. No sooner had she said this when two sharp-eyed seagulls landed on the side of the skip. The raggy dolls kept very still. I was sure something moved, said the first seagull, looking about greedily. Whatever it is, I saw it first. It's mine, squawked the other. Bah! You couldn't see your own beak, shrieked the first. Lucy could control herself no longer. Her knees began knocking again. Both seagulls turned their heads sharply towards the raggy dolls in their cardboard box. Ha! Ah, that's not food, said the second seagull. Toys! Who can't see his own beak? Pa! And off they flapped. The raggy dolls sighed with relief. We'd better find a way of getting out of here, said back to front. May we, said Claude. This place stinks. Ooh la la. The raggy dolls were just about to climb out of the cardboard box when they saw someone coming. It was a little old lady pushing a pram. The raggy dolls watched as she stopped and rummaged about in a nearby skip. Aha! she cried as she pulled out an old clock. Waste not, want not. And she put the clock in her pram. She's coming this way, hissed Dotty. Quick, hide! The raggy dolls ducked down into the cardboard box and stayed as still as could be. But the old lady found them. Why, hello, my pretties. She cried, you're much too nice to throw away. And she picked up the cardboard box and put it in the pram next to the old clock. The raggy dolls felt themselves being pushed along. It was a bumpy ride, but at last the pram stopped outside a junk shop. Now you stay here, said the old lady. You're much too nice for the likes of him. The raggy dolls wondered what on earth she was talking about as the old lady picked up the clock and took it into the junk shop. Oh, it's you again. What have you brought me today? Not another broken clock, I hope. The bell tinkled again as the door closed. The raggy dolls heard voices, but couldn't quite hear what was being said. What's going on? said Sad Sack. J -j -j just a m -m minute, stammered Hi-Fi. 
and soon all the raggy dolls could hear the man's voice again. I've told you before, Meg, I'll pay five pounds for a clock if it works, and even a bit more if it's old and interesting, but it's got to be able to tell the time. But can't you mend it? You can have it for a pound as it is. No, I haven't got the time. Not a penny unless it works. He's a mean man. He's got no heart. But then she smiled as she saw the raggy dolls. Come on, my pretties, she said. I'll take you home and clean you up. Fancy, who could throw you away? She put the clock back in the pram, and the raggy dolls were pushed and bumped along until they reached the old lady's home. It wasn't much of a place, but it was full of old clocks. None of them worked. The old lady filled a kettle and put it on a single gas ring. While the kettle boiled, she made the raggy dolls comfortable on a big cushion in an old armchair. Then she went to make some cocoa, but the tin was empty. So she filled a hot water bottle instead and got into bed. Soon she was asleep. That poor lady, said Princess. She's hardly got anything. Except a lot of broken clocks, said Sadzak. Couldn't we mend them, said Lucy suddenly. She's so nice and she's been very kind to us. Good thinking, said Dotty. Yeah, said Back to Front. If we all work together, we can polish them up and get them going again. No problem. So, all night long, the raggy dolls worked on the clocks until each one was as good as new. In the morning, the old lady woke up to the sound of ticking and tocking and different chimes. Oh, oh my goodness, she exclaimed. It's, it's a miracle. The raggy dolls watched as she got out of bed and put as many clocks as she could into her pram. Oh my goodness, she kept saying. I'll buy some fish for lunch and some cocoa and maybe an electric blanket. The door slammed, and she was gone. Time we were going to, said Dotty. But where to, said Sadzak. We've got nowhere to go. Back to the factory, of course, said Dotty. The reject bin will still be there. They'll have forgotten all about cleaning up by now. May we, said Claude. But how will we get there? Back to front was looking out of the window. There's the answer, he cried. What luck! On the other side of the street was a toy shop, and outside the toy shop was Grimes's delivery van with its back door open. Come on, everyone, said Dotty. There's no time to lose. And in no time at all, the raggy dolls were home again, back in the reject bin. The raggy dolls, raggy dolls, raggy dolls are happy just to be. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, dolls like you and me. It was a quiet, peaceful Sunday afternoon. The sun shone, there was no breeze, even the birds were silent. The raggy dolls were up in the treehouse, snoozing after lunch. Princess opened her eyes and watched a butterfly slowly opening and closing its wings. Oh, I do like peace and quiet, she sighed. Hmm, said Dotty, half asleep. I said, it's so nice when everything's peaceful like this. I quite agree, said Dotty, dreamily. But the peace and quiet was soon to be shattered by an ear-splitting noise. The treehouse shook and all the birds took wing in terror. What was that? said Sadzak, suddenly wide awake. The noise had so frightened Lucy that she had fallen to pieces and couldn't speak. The others helped put her together. I th think it was a j j jet plane, 
stammered Hi-Fi. Yeah, agreed back to front. Probably an Air Force fighter. Well, he was flying dangerously low, said Dotty crossly. That is their job, said Claude. It is très dangereux, and they must practice, n'est-ce pas? Well, I think it's awful, said Princess, spoiling heart peace and quiet like that. I never want to hear another noise like that again, said Lucy, finding her voice at last. I've never been so terrified. But in the very next instant, another jet flew over them. Once again, the tree house shook. The ragged dolls ran down the stairs inside the hollow tree and out into the field. They watched as the two jets disappeared into the distance. <gasps> Do you think they'll come back? said Lucy, nervously. N -n no, said Hi-Fi. I'm sure they've gone back to b -b -b base. Let's go for a walk, said Dotty. That will take our minds off horrid things. The others agreed. The ragged dolls walked and talked until they reached the dark wood. Perhaps we'll find some peace and quiet in here, said Dotty. But she was wrong. All the animals that lived in the woods had been terrified by the noisy jets. They met a squirrel who was so frightened his teeth kept chattering. They rescued a rabbit with his head stuck in a hole that was too small for him. A young deer approached the ragged dolls nervously. She lowered her head to speak to them. Did you hear it? She asked softly. The raggy dolls nodded. We creatures who live in the wood have very sensitive ears. It was so painful. Why do they have to go so fast? Said a badger grumpily. What's the point of it all? No one really knew, but by now everything was calm again. The squirrel's teeth had stopped chattering, beetles had begun to move, and insects buzzed. Peace and quiet at last, said Princess. But not for long. From out of nowhere came another jet. Oh, this is impossible, said Dotty, when the noise had died down. Isn't there something we can do? Je ne sais pas, said Claude. We are very small and they have much power, he shrugged. Oh, dear said Lucy. There must be something we can do. If only we knew when they were coming. That gives me an idea, said Back to Front. Hi-Fi, see if you can tune into the pilot's radios. Good thinking, said Dotty. I'll try, try said Hi-Fi. And he turned the knobs on the side of his headphones. I th th think I've g g g got something, he said at last. Everyone listened as the pilots talked to one another. Red leader, red leader, this is blue leader, section two, over. Blue leader, this is red leader, receiving you. Take position and repeat maneuver, over. Blue leader to red leader, understood, over and out. Hmm, said Dotty. That means they're coming back. Well, if they are going to make a horrid noise, then so are we. What do you mean, Dotty? said Sansac, slightly alarmed. Simply this. We'll stamp and yell and jump up and down whenever they fly over us. We can thump, said the rabbits. I can growl, said the badger. Quite fiercely, though I say so myself. Good, said Dotty. Now get ready. I think one is coming now. And sure enough, they heard a jet approaching. The raggy dolls and all the animals jumped up and down and yelled for all they were worth. When the jet had passed, everyone laughed. <laughs> it worked! It worked! cried Lucy happily. I wasn't scared a bit. I almost found it enjoyable, said the badger. Look out! Here comes another one! Once again, everyone jumped up and down, thumped and yelled and growled until the jets had gone again. The noise is still painful, said the deer. But it's not so bad when you know what to expect. Everyone agreed. J -j -j just a m -m minute, said Hi-Fi, listening to his headphones. I'm g -g -g getting something else. Everyone listened to the pilot's voices again. Red leader to all sections, red leader to all sections. Well done, but could be better. Return to base to refuel. 
regrouped to continue maneuvers at 1600 hours. Over. Message understood, Red Leader. Over and out. That means they'll be back in about an hour, said Back to Front. Never mind, said a rabbit. Now we know what to do. We won't be so frightened. All the animals thanked the raggy dolls, who said goodbye and made their way back to the treehouse. As they walked, Sad Sack thought, I suppose it's not worth hoping for any more peace and quiet today. Back in the treehouse, the raggy dolls decided to play games. Dotty drew a big donkey and Lucy cut out a tail. Princess made a blindfold and put it on Sad Sack. You go first, Sad Sack, said Dotty, and she handed him a drawing pin. Mind your fingers. I'm no good at this, said Sad Sack glumly. But he very nearly got the tail in the right place first go. Everyone clapped. The talon, mon ami, said Claude. That will be hard to beat. No problem, said Back to Front. Me next. Back to Front didn't need a blindfold because his head was always facing the wrong way. No peeping, said Dotty. As if I would said back to front, and he pinned the tail neatly to the donkey's head. <laughs> Everyone laughed as a jet flew over. The raggy dolls were so busy playing, they didn't notice two more jets flying over. Whose turn is it now, said Sad Sack, just as another jet zoomed overhead. Dotty's mouth moved, but no one could hear a word. I beg your pardon? said Sad Sack when the jet was gone. I said, isn't it funny how we've almost stopped noticing the jets? Everyone laughed and carried on with the game. Isn't it strange, thought Sad Sack, how everyone gets used to things, even when they're terrible. <laughs> around and you will find people of every kind like the raggy dog raggy dog those like you and me raggy dog raggy dog made him perfectly so if you're not at ease with your knobbly knees and your fingers are all thumbs stand on your two left feet and join 